Welcome to an educational video presented by the Pastiche Distance Learning Program. This discussion is about environmental defence facials for clinical service in the summer, but could also be adapted for the winter season. This lecture is an introduction to future cosmetic chemistry classes developed by Pastiche Training and based on the principles of corneotherapy. What is corneotherapy? Corneotherapy is an innovative and progressive methodology of thinking, with its core principles of the correction and restoration of the stratum corneum and barrier defense systems, while keeping the epidermis intact at all times. Corneotherapy cosmetic chemistry is the care of the stratum corneum, using topical therapies with products that mimic skin structure and function. We will be targeting clinical services for the skin during the summer, and this begins with considering the relevant ambient humidity of the area the client lives in during summer months. I often say in my classes that you have to think like a weather presenter, as well as a skin treatment therapist, and consider if the treatment or modality chosen is seasonally appropriate or correct. If humidity is over 75%, it means there is ample water in the atmosphere and humidity is considered to be high. When humidity is below 55%, the amount of water in the atmosphere is lower and the air drier. What does this mean to the skin treatment therapist? What relevance does it have to clinical services? When there is a high percentage of water in the atmosphere, it exerts pressure on the skin surface. This slows the evaporation of water, transepidermal water loss, and the skin remains well hydrated. When the humidity is low, there is less water exerting pressure onto the skin's surface, causing faster evaporation of water, and the epidermis becomes depleted in the free water required for enzyme activity and maintaining a viable epidermis. Also, applying this principle to working, play and living environments that have artificial cooling and heating systems, and consider how many hours of the day does the client spend in the artificial environment. Besides, it is not just humidity or dryness that needs to be included in this thought process. It is the amount of cellular oxidative stress created by the pollution found in many work environments. Of course, skin essential lipids also play a role in slowing transepidermal water loss by slowing the evaporation process. However, if low essential skin lipid levels are combined with low humidity, then water evaporation will be faster. The mindset of thinking hydration treatment, because it's summertime, is entirely inappropriate for a summer clinical service, as these treatments often overhydrate in conditions of high humidity causing areas of the facial skin to develop rashes and small watery vesicles, similar to rosacea or seborrheic perioral dermatitis. What should you be thinking of as suitable skin treatments for the summer? What environmental conditions prevail the most often? UVR is usually the first thing that comes to mind for most of you. However, along with that thought, you should be thinking free radicals and oxidative stress, and the resulting lipid peroxidation. Skin is unable to withstand these oxidative events, especially when combined with damaged or aging cells and loss of skin barrier defense systems, resulting in a compromised skin that will be susceptible to allergens and pathogens. Oxidative stress is the loss of both oil and water-soluble antioxidants, within the immediate environment around the protective cell membrane. Examples of these are vitamin E, alpha-lipoic, also known as thioctic acid, omegas 3 and 6, and vitamin A, in the form of retinal palmitate and beta-carotene as the best-known pro-vitamin A carotenoid, vitamin C, and glutathione. Although vitamin E abounds in quantity, it is a very poor antioxidant, and can only neutralize a small number of free radicals before becoming inactive. Vitamin C reactivates vitamin E, and therefore without vitamin C, the cell has lost an important antioxidant, vitamin E, 
leaving it susceptible to oxidative stress. This compounded loss of vitamin E then leads on to lipid peroxidation, which is a deterioration of the phospholipids that make up 45% of many skin cell membranes, such as the keratinocyte and melanocyte. Oxidative stress is the earliest form of cellular damage caused by exposure to UVR and subsequent sunburn. There are many other forms of cellular damage created by UVR that are more serious and cause skin cancer. However, when talking to clients, keep it simple. To change a conventional skin treatment into one that protects the skin from the environment, what are the actives required to make a difference? Consider free radicals and the ensuing oxidative stress and lipid peroxidation that follows. What actives commonly negate the action of a radical, of course? It is the antioxidant and flavonoids group. The relative importance and interactions between different antioxidants is a complex area, with the various metabolites and enzyme systems having synergistic and interdependent effects on one another. The action of one antioxidant may depend on the proper function of other members of the antioxidant system, and the amount of protection provided by any single antioxidant. There are two main groups of antioxidants, water-soluble, hydrophilic, or oil-soluble, hydrophobic, and in general, the following principles apply. Water-soluble antioxidants react with oxidants in the cell, intracellular, and outside the cell, extracellular, and lipid-soluble antioxidants protect cell membranes from lipid peroxidation and work in synergy with the water-soluble group. Not all enzymes, proteins, vitamins, and metabolites can be used as actives in cosmetic chemistry. However, what should be understood is what specific cells of various systems require to function efficiently. This knowledge will help choose an antioxidant most effective for a particular condition. The ACE vitamins are always the first to come to mind when thinking about protecting skin from oxidative stress. Environmental defence treatments could use these vitamins as serums under masks, or may even be the mask itself, and all would offer prevention, protection and repair. Others available are the botanicals as antioxidants. Many if not most of the antioxidants used in the cosmetic industry come from botanical origins, and categorising the actions of these types of antioxidant is difficult, because there are too many to mention. However, most botanical antioxidants can be classified into one of three categories – flavonoids, carotenoids, and polyphenols. Flavonoids possess a polyphenolic structure that accounts for their antioxidant, UVR protectant, and metalchelation abilities. Bioflavonoids work with other antioxidants to offer a system of protection. Numerous studies have shown their unique role in protecting vitamin C from oxidation in the body, thereby allowing the body to reap more benefits from vitamin C. Polyphenols compose the largest category of botanical antioxidants. The most widely used commercialised polyphenol antioxidants are listed here on the screen. Xanthones exhibit a strong antioxidant activity and are considered to be more potent than both vitamin C and vitamin E. Often referred to as the super antioxidants, xanthones have been found to support and enhance the body's immune system. They are heat stable molecules and, unlike proteins, won't denature or lose their structure when heated. This property should make them a useful addition to sun protection and other formulations exposed to radiant heat. Carotenoids. In addition to beta-carotene, lutein, lycopene, and astaxanthin, there are also the colorless carotenoids. Phytoene and phytofluene from algae and tomato sources that are also UV protectants and antioxidants. Writing the treatment program. The outline that follows is for a compromised skin that is a high risk for pigmentation, 
meaning I am following the protocols for sensitive skin or skin that is phototype 4 to 6 or has permanent diffused redness, pigmentation or the red hair gene, MC1R, and is prone to skin cancer. After the usual preparatory phase of cleansing and saturating and hydrating the stratum corneum with your post-cleanser lotion, apply the antioxidant serums of your choice. Just remember that if you have chosen a vitamin C, it is best to use an encapsulated sodium ascorbyl phosphate or the oil-soluble ascorbyl tetraisopalmitate. Do not use ascorbic acid. It is too acidic and causes the high-risk skin to sting. Now apply a layer of cream suitable for lipid dryness or compromised skin. Then use the mask, preferably a paraplastic mask that will infuse the actives and cream by the occlusive properties of the mask. Remove the mask after 20 minutes and then massage with a cream or oil that has an oil-soluble antioxidant profile. Complete your treatment with an oil-soluble antioxidant or with a sun protection product, if it has been a daytime appointment. Of course, if the service has been performed during the evening, finish with a layer of oil-soluble antioxidant serums and night cream. Why do I finish this treatment with an oil-soluble antioxidant? Using the principle that oil sits on top of water, it is logical to assume that after the completion of the facial massage with an oil-based cream or massage oil, that to apply a water-based serum would be a waste of time. Because a water-based serum would be unable to penetrate the oil that has been massaged into the skin for 20 minutes. The other reason is that an oil-soluble antioxidant will not oxidize quickly and the benefits of the environmental defense treatment are longer. Many questions come up in class after this discussion about environmental defense treatments. Some questions indicate to me that many of you find it hard to make changes to your treatment procedures. Some of you will have noted that I have not included desquamation steps, or vapor zone, in my environmental defense treatment. Two reasons for this. One is that the skin has been classified as high risk, and part of the protocols for a high risk skin is not to desquamate and not to apply heat. The other reason is that in an ideal world of regular clinical services, time is the biggest enemy. If treatments were longer than 30 minutes, it becomes cost prohibitive, and we want this treatment to be affordable so the client will have them regularly. For environmental therapies to be effective, they need action every two weeks. Consider this 30-minute environmental defense treatment as a specialty treatment, one that is preventative and not for relaxation or reparative skin treatment therapy. One other step needs to be considered for the environmental defense program to be effective throughout the summer, and this is home care. There would be a few standard products and protocols that must be used and followed daily. The first would be a selection of serums that are water and oil soluble. The water soluble antioxidant serum would be applied under the sun protection cream that the client could wear during the day, and the oil-soluble antioxidant after completing their cleansing ritual. I know you will now reconsider what the new summer treatment protocols will be, and that you will offer your clients a treatment that is of benefit to the skin, not just a facial that is for hydration and relaxation. There are many specialist subject distance learning classes available from pastichetraining.com, and many articles to be read. Also, there are wonderful books and educational posters available from virtualbeauty.co.nz. I look forward to seeing you in my virtual classroom very soon. Goodbye for now.